All right, time to go teach. Hello and welcome to this episode of Tutor Tutors, continuing our unit on ecology and looking at biomes today. Specifically, we are going to be looking at some of the major terrestrial biomes. We are not going to focus on the marine biomes today. So target of the day, describe how orientation of the earth to the sun is actually going to affect climate or in other words, affect the amount of energy from the sun that those different areas are going to get. And then we're going to identify key factors in some of the major terrestrial biomes, just outlining what main features they might have. So first off, if we look at the biosphere and we think about it and we find it all out, this is how it could look, and we have all of the energy that comes in to this planet comes from the sun. And as it moves across, the sun's direct rays are going to have the most energy. That is where the sun's light energy is going to be at its most powerful. But not all areas of the biosphere happen to get direct sunlight. Many of the areas are going to get in direct sunlight that is going to have a less direct angle. So we are going to have these other rays of sun that are going to be at a low angle that hits our planet. And that low angle that the sunlight hits the earth at means that there's going to be less energy for the producers. And if there's less energy for the producers, that means there's going to be less energy for the consumers as well. So when we are looking at this, to the terrestrial body generally grouped by the plant life that is the dominant species in that area. And that is the way that we generally look at biomes. We separate them out by the main plant life. And these are a little list of some of the main biomes. You could have a polar biome, a tundra, a taiga, a temperate deciduous forest, a temperate grassland, a savanna, a tropical forest, or a desert. And we're going to go through each of these different biomes, explaining a few key features that they each might have. Starting off with the polar. The polar region is going to have the steepest angle that the sunlight is going to hit it at and thus is going to end up with the least amount of energy from sunlight. Its temperatures are extremely cold all year round. The polar regions are at the extremes of the biosphere. And you'll notice that there is no plant life in a polar biome because there's no soil for the plants to grow in. So that is a polar biome. Next, moving southward a little bit from the North Pole, we would get to the tundra. It experiences a little bit more direct sunlight than the polar regions do, so it's going to be slightly warmer and it will also have more light energy. The precipitation it gets is approximately 15 to 25 centimeters a year, which is not a lot of precipitation, but it is enough to support plants growing. It contains permafrost though. That means that there is a layer underneath the soil that is permanently frozen. And that is going to reduce the height or the size of the plants that are able to grow because their roots can't penetrate through the permafrost. And that's why you're not going to find trees in a tundra. A tundra is normally dominated by either bushes or grasses. And that is a tundra. Moving a little bit further south from where a tundra would be, we would end up with a taiga. Now, a taiga, that is a coniferous forest. And the taiga is the largest terrestrial biome that exists on this planet. It gets a little bit more precipitation than what we got in the tundra with 20 to 75 centimeters of precipitation a year. It also receives a little bit more direct sunlight, which is going to provide for more light energy for the plant life to grow. The soil is shallow and acidic, and it's generally nutrient poor, 
but it can still support the trees because it doesn't have the permafrost anymore. Their roots can penetrate deeper into the soil, and that's why we can have trees in a taiga, whereas in a tundra, we were unable to have trees. Next, we move to the temperate deciduous forest. Now, this is where you're going to run into those broadleaf trees that lose their leaves in the winter months. Those are deciduous trees, and they end up being the dominant plant species in the temperate deciduous forest. These forests have both warm and cold seasons. They are going to end up having both a winter and a summer. The precipitation is approximately 75 to 150 centimeters a year, which is a lot more precipitation than what we had in the taiga or in the tundra or in the polar regions. It's generally a nutrient-rich soil, and that allows for these deciduous trees to grow. The fact that there is plenty of nutrients and there's also plenty of water. Similarly, to the temperate deciduous forest, we have the temperate grassland. Grasses, though, instead of trees, are the dominant species. There aren't many trees found in the temperate grassland. A temperate grassland also has much less precipitation than the temperate deciduous forest has. It has about 25 to 75 centimeters of precipitation a year. The soil might not have a lot of nutrients present, and there's also going to be a prevalence of disturbances in these temperate grasslands. These natural disturbances could be anything between grazing of animals or down to wildfires. And these particular disturbances don't harm the grasses nearly as much as they harm the woody species, which allows the grasses to be the dominant species in a temperate grassland. Moving on to a savanna or a tropical grassland. This we get more direct sunlight. We are now getting closer to the equator, and getting closer to the equator means that we are getting more direct sunlight, which also means that we are getting more energy in that light. The precipitation is about 30 to 50 centimeters a year. So it's not as much precipitation as many of the other biomes that we've talked about, and we're going to have extreme seasonal variation. The variation is going to be a wet season and a dry season. We're not going to have a season where it gets cold and a season where it gets hot. We're going to have a season where either we have plenty of water or a season where we are in complete drought. That is really common in a savanna. Grasses, just like in the temperate grassland, are the dominant species, but there are going to be some scattered trees and shrubs in a savanna. Moving on, we get to the tropical forest. Some of these forests are tropical rainforests, which you've probably heard about. They exist very, very, very near to the equator. That is why they are tropical. And they have low seasonal variation. Because a tropical rainforest is right near the equator, the sunlight is going to stay stable basically the entire year at 11 to 12 hours of sunlight every day. The precipitation is gonna vary between 100 and 250 centimeters a year. There's a lot of variability here in how much precipitation these forests can get, but they get plenty of rainfall to support a lot of plant life. A desert, well, one of the key things that we recognize with the desert is that there aren't a lot of plants that are able to live in the harsh conditions of a desert. The soil is really sandy and there is not much precipitation every year. It's less than 25 centimeters of precipitation each year. And that's not a lot of water to support plants. And because there's also not a lot of water in the air, there is a very large temperature range between the temperature of a desert during the daytime and the temperature of the desert at night. That is deserts. So in summary, the biosphere, it's divided into these different ecological regions that we call biomes. They're extremely large and they are mostly separated out by the main or the dominant plant species that exists within that particular biome. And that is it for this time. So until next time, be awesome, stay awesome.